Hi, my name is Richard Schlaufmitz. I'm at St. Francis Hospital in New York. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking about intravascular lithotripsy for treatment of severely calcified coronary artery disease, specifically this RUP had three study. These are my disclosures. So coronary artery disease um, has been treated with stents. And one of the problems we have with stents is that if you have calcified coronary arteries, you don't get a great result. You could have difficulty crossing the lesion with a stent or a balloon. And if you do cross, you could have insufficient balloon force the artery open. And if you have calcium present, you may not have drug um, evenly spread across that vessel to minimize restenosis. And most importantly, underexposed would be and crack the calcium and get the vessel open. So there have been more trials, clinical trials, with intravascular lithotripsy, CAD 1, 2, 3, and 4. And what we're going to talk about today is the OCT substudy in CAD 3. All the enrollments were complete and there were safety, and feasibility, and effectiveness studies. So the CAD 3 OCT substudy, the objective was to understand the mechanism of action of IVL for the treatment of de novo heavily calcified coronary lesions prior to stent placement using OCT optical coherence tomography. And I think this was an amazing study because this is one of the only studies where we did OCT imaging before treating a vessel. We use the OCT imaging immediately after treating with the technology we used to see if we effectively had calcium inflation. And then we used OCT a third time after the stent was delivered to look at the final result. So there were three OCT runs before treatment, after the therapy, and final. And in order to be enrolled, you had to have a heavy calcified vessel documented by OCT with a length less than 40, a stenosis greater than 50, and um, the diameter between 2.5 and 4. So procedural characteristics were pretty similar in the OCT arm and the non-OCT arm. What's interesting to me is if you look at total procedure time, actual OCT procedure time took less, not statistically significant, but it took less than the non-OCT time of believing that OCT lets you have precision angioplasty and you can act actually quicker even though you, you know. I'm going to present a typical case of um, IVL using OCT. This is a gentleman who had angioplasty and stenting to an LAD and now comes back for stage procedure. And using uh, precision angioplasty with OCT, we test the IVL balloon size uh, before we pick the catheter. And we try to get a one-to-one -one size. And we look to see the calcium where the most calcium is to place our um, shockwave therapy. And then afterwards, we assess if this fracture and then finally stent. So in this particular case, this calcified mid-RCA lesion. And I would say to you that it's impossible with an angiogram to assess what that calcium looks like. Is it deep, is it superficial, or is it nodular? So we use imaging, and here you can see an imaging run where you have the angiography screen on the left for co-registration, the cross-sectional on the right, and then you have two longitudinals. The yellow mustard colored is three-dimensional, and the one on the bottom is a two-dimensional distal to proximal. And the first thing you do is see if calcium is present. And using the OCT, we see that we have circumferential calcium, and we can measure the length of the lesion, as well as the depth of the calcium and the arc of the calcium. So using OCT in a matter of minutes, I could see the size of the lumen, so I know what IVL catheter to pick beforehand. I know that I have significant calcium, and it's superficial calcium that has an arc greater than 270 degrees. And the depth is greater than 0.5 millimeters. Now, I know that if you meet these criteria of circumferential calcium with length greater than 5 millimeters and an arc greater than 180, our CVI score tells us that you're not going to get a great result with the balloon technology alone. So using OCT, I was able to see, not from the angiogram, but from the OCT image, that this is something that had severe superficial calcium. So we went ahead, and uh, now just this is a... a the shot showing you the calcium on the angiogram, but it is also showing you the arc of calcium on OCT. You see it's a 334 degree arc of calcium, clearly significant lesion. So now uh, we assessed the length of the vessel. We see the arc of calcium in the MLA, it's heavily calcified. There's a little nodular calcium there. We look for normal to normal tissue. You don't always get a perfect EEL, but we look for the best lumen we can, and we come up with the size, the length, and the morphology. Now we can go ahead and do IVL. And what's interesting here is you see the IVL balloon at four atmospheres, at four atmospheres, um, and at four atmospheres with 
200, 300 degree calcium, you know it's going to be a hard time to open that up. But here you get full balloon expansion um, at each area. So what we then do is go ahead and do an OCT assessment to see if we have fractured calcium. This is important because if you don't have fracture, you're going to have to go back. And there you see at around 11 o'clock, we have one fracture segment. Approximately, you're going to see a little more fracture right there around 9 o'clock. And once I have fracture, I know I'm going to be successful to get full deployment with my stent. If I didn't have fracture, I would go back and do more pulses prior to putting a stent. And sometimes we found is that the initial length of the vessel um, changes. So we always assess before we stent. So here we document the fracture. We're going to get a reference range of and proximal sites to get our best landing zone. We don't want to land in superficial calcium or thicker. And once we get our length, automation tells us we have a 23 millimeter stent. We have our reference range. Initially, we measure our size so we know exactly what stent we're going to put in. And now we can go ahead to. So here's our final outcome with the stent. You see distal stent area, proximal stent area, um, minimal stent area where the cap is. Um, and uh, it's a good result. And just to put the documentation, we do our run to look at things. Every time I do an OCT run at the end of a procedure, I want to see do I have a dissection, so I do edge assessment, just approximately. I look for expansion, which is done automatic um, with uh, measuring the uh, EEL, but it's automatically now with the new technology. We see we have 0% uh, residual stenosis distally, and when we um, go from mid to proximal, you'll see you're gonna have greater landing goal as per the Illumina 3 guidelines, and we'll try to get 90% greater for your reference range, distally and proximally. Here distally, we have zero, and when we measure proximally, you're going to see that we have um, greater than 90%. So we have expansion, we have dissection, and you have automatic detention, uh, detection, uh, showing that you have apposition and stent. So the three things that could cause complications after a stent, we can document in a matter of seconds to show that we have a great result. This is precision angioplasty with intravascular um, lithotripsy. And this is the final comparison of baseline. And finally, you have a really nice lumen. This is our best chance to um, have a vessel phase open. So the key takeaways here in this case, you want to assess morphology, length of the lesion, diameter of the lesion, and that's before you do the procedure and you do registration. And then afterwards, you look for medial dissection, apposition, and expansion. These technologies work extremely well together. In the study, the OCT sub-study, if you look at the pre-IVL, and here, the maximal cal calcium angle was 293 degrees, and stent expansion was 100%. The malopose struts, only 4.1. And luminal gain, this slide shows you pre-procedure, post-IVL, and post-stent, and you can see that there's a positive MLA shift after intravascular lithotripsy with low balloon inflations and further increase after you have your stent placement. When we look at calcium fractures, you see that calcium fracture was observed in 67% of the lesions post-IVL. Now, there are calcium microfractures that may occur beyond the current resolution limits of OCT, which may explain why we didn't see 100% fracture. But our outcome by fracture visualization showed that we had consistent outcome regardless of fracture visualization by OCT stenosis increased nicely across the board. Our performance and safety outcomes were excellent. There were no complications at the end. The device crossed 100% of the time, 98% uh, procedural success. Um, the diameters uh, stenosis is where we wanted them to be with excellent gain. And in conclusion, we show that OCT confirmed the safety with no severe angiographic complications at the end of the procedure. And OCT demonstrated longitudinal and circumferential calcium fractures in heavily calcified lesions resulting in A, increased vessel compliance, B, large post-procedure MSA, with C, excellent stent expansion. The MSA, area stenosis, and stent expansion outcomes were excellent regardless of calcium fracture visualization by OCT. And this may represent the limitation of subtle microfractures or out-of-plane fractures from calcified plaque. Thank you very much.